got some news. I had a few emails last night and the first one, I don't know if you remember the guy who crashed into my van and um, was arrested for drink driving and it's been over a year um, since that happened. Well, they had the deadline to submit my statement to the court and my solicitors um, through the insurance they rang me yesterday and sent me an email to say that they'd, they'd missed the deadline because someone had gone on holiday and the new fella who got it only just picked it up and missed the deadline so we've had four the, the court case has been going on that long it's four different people have left the company come back so that was the first bit of information I got and then he said I have took over the case now so I'm gonna you know push the other side he's like I can't believe this has gone on this long he brings the other side and explains what's going on to them and the other side's insurance have paid out! Woo! All this time and all it took was one phone call. He said, the solicitor was like, I can't believe it's gone on this long. All I've done is phone them and say, what the hell's going on here? You guys smashed into our fella's van and has been arrested for drink driving and he's handed the van back that he on, took on hire, he only had it for two weeks and give it back. Like, what is going on? And they were just like, yeah, sorry about that. There you go, done, done and dusted. So, that money now, eh, I'm already looking at getting a temporary forklift for the yard. So if anyone's got a rough terrain forklift, because at the moment we're gonna be putting concrete panels down that need to lift, they weigh about 1.3 ton and then the fencing panels weigh about 1.8 ton I think so we just need a rough terrain um, forklift doesn't have to be pretty just cheap and cheerful and see us through until we I can order the dumper from China uh, so if anyone's got one give us a shout and then it wasn't all good, so I had another email that said that the other case that was in court, the the delivery driver had fell down this um, stop tap cover that's got nothing to do with us, we'd never even touched it, there was five people walking on it and he walked on it and suddenly it moved more than halfway past and his leg fell down and yeah. Uh, that's been settled so I don't know if you know this but if your car insurance any insurance you take out it's not up to you whether you go to court or not it's up to the insurer so they're insuring you and it's their decision it's their money whether they risk going to court or not and the majority of times it doesn't go to court because the barrister's fees are often more for a few hours than they are um, for the entire, you know, claim. So that one's been settled. Not really sure how I feel about that. I mean, the one sort of thing I did get was before, uh, during this week when we were going to go to court on Friday, I actually um, had previously spoken to the owner of the company and just asked them, I said, look, you know, it looks like it just looks like it's impossible to do. And I just asked him, I said, what, what, what's, what's the driver like? Is he, would he, would he be likely to, you know, fake this accident just to get some money for his holiday? And he said, no, he was like, you know, he's, he's like one of their best work sort of things. And he's like, you know, everything's by the book. So I was like, do you know what? I just have to take it on the chin, won't I? And it may be, obviously, Sounds like he's an honest guy and 
maybe has somehow it doesn't make sense to me but maybe obviously he has so um yeah i'm sure my insurance will now go up i'm not sure how much by uh, i have asked them for how much was the settled case for but just part of being a business owner um uh, the other news is now that uh, there's a new bakery opened up at the top of the road that we're working on and the other day the lads discovered it and was like ah oh, they do these keen kimu pitta and it's like minced lamb with cheese melted on like a pitta that's just literally um clay oven made in front of you and they were all buzzing off them lewis had one and then had to go home and was sick and then today this morning joe and dave had them yesterday and they both feel sick now so i'm not not even sure who's in today could just be me ben and blaine and we've got loads to do today so it's a bit bit of a kick in the teeth but again that's part of business isn't it i've sort of set them the challenge of getting it finished today and we'll just give it our best shot and then it's hard because without having more of these student jobs or taking more jobs on we can't really hire more staff because there's days where like this where i think we need more staff and then we'll have days where everyone turns up everyone turns in and you know you're not getting value for money but yeah that's up to me to sort of weigh that up um we'll see right see who turns up and what we can get done today how are we all tom's back in yep. i reckon i said friday but we've had a few cry offs haven't we we've had a few we've had a few that's gone up as well and and the stack's coming down as well. The stack should come down quite quick, to be fair. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> Just tap them. Um, sound. At least we've got a few of us in anyway. I was worried there was just going to be me, you and Ben. Right, let's get him. Um, so, main thing's getting this plaster off on that skip. Um, and we'll start to open the... Is Ben doing the stack, is he? Do you want to get the fan on? Come on. Yeah. Ben, Ben, Ben. Be careful, that's about to go. Wait there. Is he making? What's she? Wait there. Who's that? Is that Lou? Hey, don't do that because if it knocks the ladder, you're gone. Hey, you got it. Hey, you've got to do that. You come down a sec. I just missed that by a second, then. Yeah, that's where you're going. What did you do? You put that timber underneath it. Drop that up and then. <laughs> you can see how many bricks the lads carry already. Lane's got five. Tom's got four. Dave's got four. And we got Mick and Ben left. Free gym, free gym membership here, fellas. Come and work for us, and you get all access pass to all weights. Here's Mick, two four six eight, two four six eight. You can tell who's the top paid, can't you? Hey, Dave's back in the hot seat. <laughs> why have I brought you, Dave? Because I'm the oldest man on the firm. And why else? We're not ages here, by the way, so why have I brought you, Dave? Out of everyone I could have picked, 
It was between you and Tom. Shortest. No. Because you carry the least bricks. Oh yeah, can <laughs> <laughs> So a business decision was made. They believe them there that more bricks will get carried. Um, so we're just going to go to the yard, tip this. Um, Ben's just said that obviously when we were last there, there was a woman taking videos of us tipping the van, saying that, you know, it, it, again, dust. So I don't know anyone who sprays water as they tip a van. However, we will. Okay, so when we get there, we'll set the hose up. And as I tip the van, we'll just just to, just to cover ourselves and just to make you know just so the dust doesn't go from the van 100 100 yards over the road through someone's letterbox up the stairs <laughs> into the office and into the fella's mouth yeah, yeah. Like the yeah just in case that happens um and then yeah, we're just going to go back and forth. So I think what we're going to do now is they'll, they'll get the rest of that stack down. We'll do another brick run. And then we'll put the cages back on this. Put the wood on here. And then we'll take the wood, come back, and then we'll do another brick run. Then we'll have to do another tip run, another wood run for the ground floor. And in the meantime, between all that, we'll get all the plaster on the skip. I feel, um, I feel like quite, what's the word, like, I'm happy or euphoric that like we've got everything in place we've got everything in place in the business to be able to go bang 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 you like imagine trying to organize this today going right we need a wood skip we need brick skips we need four of them we need a non-recycling skip we need a, be a nightmare wouldn't it so yeah I feel quite I feel quite proud that like over the years what I've like bought it's all it's all coming together on these jobs now and like making them run smoother and better. So we're on the yard and let me flip this round. Uh, I've just gave Blaine the keys to my van so that he can get, um, yeah, just fill, it, fill them up from there. And then what we'll do is we'll just soak these before we, before we tip in case there is a bit of dust on them. Because you never know Someone could be filming. So I've just been on the phone to me fleet insurer and uh, I think it's with Aviva just to check um, a price to put um, a forklift on. So some of the forklifts I've been looking at, some of them come with a V5 and a reg so you can drive them on the road and I thought, do you know what? I always think it's good to be as flexible as possible. So if we've got that option, you know, all our works within a couple of miles, so we've got that option to be able to go, do you know what? Like, let's put a few pallets of uh, whatever on the tippers and then we can follow it with the forklift, lift it off. Or we could go around and pick up um, pallets of bricks, say if, like another builder puts them on the street, we can go around, pick them up, take them to the yard. Um, so yeah, let's see, what do you reckon, how much do you reckon it'll come back for to uh, add a forklift to the fleet. Is that going to be high or low? High. High? Yeah. Even though it's dead old. I don't, I don't know, you know. Do you think you're more likely to I crash in a forklift? Yeah. I think it's going to be roughly around... Even though they don't go fast, than that? Because they don't go fast. I think they're going to be crashed along the lines of a grab. Mm -hmm. It's a working vehicle, isn't it? Nah, it's not going to be as much as a grab wagon. Oh yeah, one thing I forgot to mention was uh, I um, I ordered a pizza last night from uh, a place in Garston and um, La Musa it's called, absolutely amazing and uh, I opened the box and got a nice little surprise so I'll put it, I'll put it here now <laughs> so obviously they've, uh, they've obviously seen what's been going on or seen the channel or um, I don't know but yeah I wasn't expecting that when I opened my pizza. <laughs> Do you know it's weird? Like, obviously chatting to that fella, and then one of my mates I played footy with, his brother has got a. He, that's his job. He deals, he sells forklifts, lad. So he takes them in, part extras them, sells new ones, old ones, whatever. So I messaged him this morning when I got that email, and like, it's only just sunk in now when we've been in the yard, and I've been like, ah, oh, if we had a forklift, we could move those scaffold things there. 
could do this, we could do bricks, we could do whatever, and I thought, and then it's just sunk in that like, like I'm gonna, I'm looking at buying a forklift. It's like, honestly, it's like mad. I remember buying a mini digger, and I felt like amazing. I felt like, ah, oh, I'm a proper builder. I've got a mini digger. Whereas, like now, even if it is an absolute tin pot forklift, um, and then if we get one with a V5, then we can go on the road, mate. Ah. Oh, like, I'm gonna turn up to I'm gonna turn up to footy uh, on a Wednesday, and I'm gonna drive it there. <laughs> <laughs> turn up in a forklift, and then uh, if we win, I can just put in the group afterwards. Like, yeah, you got Josh, who's got a Ferrari. You got Manish, who's got a Bentley. You got Nick, who's got all these sports cars. Sanjay's got the Porsche or whatever. And then there's me with the forklift. <laughs> And if we win, if we win like the other day, 8-0. And then I'm like, see you later, lads. I just jump in a fork. Oh, <laughs> Falling up on the well. Oh, mate. It sounds, obviously I'm making a joke about it, a forklift, but I would be like, I'd be buzzing to have a forklift. You know what I mean? I never thought, like a few years ago, that like, I'd have a yard and I'd be looking at a forklift and a dumper and all stuff like that. It's good. Wonder what I'll be looking at in five years. Silence, possibly that. No. You die when you retire. You sit in the window watching uh, <laughs> other people. Yeah, I'll home. become one of those people <laughs> lad, who's retired. I just sit at home going, What are they doing an extension there? <laughs> have they got planning? I'm gonna I'm gonna pester them. Yeah, What's going on? Look at this. I've been just sitting home on Facebook making complaints about everyone. Whose cat is this? Does anyone know who someone's let the bins out? Oh, the noise. Who's setting fireworks off at this time? I can just retire and do that. <laughs> so we're down to here now. So this will be another, another tip run now. Got it's up there. Lad. Got these bricks. And these bricks on the van now. Yeah. You're on the you on the chocolate diet like me and Dave. Yeah. Got your belt on. No, no. Got your booster seat. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want to say to the, the fella who said you need the booster seat, lad? Um, well, weird. I'll see you when I see you. <laughs> <laughs> YouTube Mafia? Yeah. <laughs> no, who he is. <laughs> oh, right. You still enjoying it? Yeah, sure. I need the boat. You know, the the shortest someone's lasted with us. How long do you reckon someone's cut said, oh, Ah, have you got any, any jobs going? We got, yeah, yeah, come in. Half a day. Ah, uh, four hours. Two hours. Two hours. Two yeah, hours. Yeah. <laughs> right, so I can't remember his name. Obviously, oh, he, was only, he was only there for two hours. So I can't remember his name. Right, what was he doing? Um, we weren't even doing nothing bad. We were like passing scaffold down and taking slates through the house. I just I remember passing like a pole to him, and he, he was like that. <laughs> <laughs> I remember well, thinking, how old was he? I, nah, I probably younger than you. Was he? Yeah. I remember thinking, what's up with him? He was like, <laughs> like that, shaking, grabbing the pole, thinking. But it wasn't even like a big scat, it was like a, you know, like a small ledger. Yeah. So it weighed like nothing. Oh, so did he just get off and off and back? He went, uh, he went on a break at 10 <laughs> and just texted me and said, oh mate, it, it's too hard. That's, that's not for me, yeah. I've probably still got the text from me. <laughs> that a while ago, was it? Um, yeah, that would have been on when we done Forney Croft jobs. So I think they've been two years ago, maybe. But no, he's still. Ah, right? he, oh, no, 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 no! I'm lying. I'm lying. <laughs> I'm lying. Are you ready for this? Someone, someone was less than that. <laughs> right, lad. So we were on here at the block of flats that we were, um, we were building, yeah. and I got a plaster in. Yeah, and he messaged me and he was like, "Yeah, looking for work, desperate." Just like a half fella. No. Nope. Like story. nah, nah, like young twenty odd lad. Yeah. And he was like, you know, I'm not. Um, he said, he said, like, to be honest, mate, I'm not. You know, I've, I've I've only recently qualified and whatever else. He said, I'm not. I'm not like 
amazing. I'm not going to throw loads on. I said to him, look, mate, I said, everyone here is always learning. Yeah. Come in, if you're decent. I said, look, you know, I think at the time, this was years ago, I said, look, I'll give you 80 quid. Yeah. Come in, if, you, if you're half decent, you know, I'll give you more and more, like whatever yeah. you can do. And obviously you can just learn on this job. And he was like, oh, boss. So he turns up. And I am late. I, I was uh, so some of the lads got there early before me, and I, I get a text off this lad saying, "Ah, oh, um, sorry, mate, uh, don't think I can, don't think I can handle it." And I'm like, <laughs> "Couldn't handle it." I'm like, "Sorry, I'm not even there yet. You haven't even like, I've got the keys. It's like you haven't even like got going yet. What's going on?" Didn't even have a goal. Then. And I got there, and uh, the lads were like, "Yeah, there was a lad parked up with the car, and um, Simo went over to him." Oh. And was like went over with no teeth and all that. It was like, all right, mate, so you here? Uh, like, what are you doing? And that. And he was like, oh yeah, yeah, I'm starting out with that. And apparently he said like, oh, you're not going to take my job, are you? Uh-huh. And the friend, the lad was to look at Sue and gone, nah, no. Nah, nah. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 this guy's the other plaster it. <laughs> so technically, he's the least because he's cost that like ten minutes. If yeah, five minutes. Five minutes, he drove, drove to the drove to the job and spun round and went, nah, not for me. So yeah, you're doing well. Hey. You can't have anything in your hand when you're driving. Huh? So you I was I was saying it's too early to have a red thunder. We've got some snide red bull from uh, Aldi. But uh, you crack one open, so I'm gonna have to have one when we get the yard now. But we're talking about um you used to have them before footy, didn't you? Yeah. So when I played, um I was playing footy part time then I was in uni. So I was in uni doing a sports science degree and biology. And part of the degree went on to talk about uh, caffeine and its effects and stuff. So there were studies that they did, and I think it was like cycling and stuff like that. And um, they'd give people um, 400 milligrams, I think it was. Is that a lot? Um, so a pro plus. milligrams of coffee? Of caffeine. Oh, caffeine, so a uh, have a look on that. How many milligrams should have 50? In. So a Red Bull has about 50, or a, a Pro Plus has about 50. In. So in this study, they were giving people eight Pro Plus. So once I'd seen that study, I was like, Sam. So I started taking eight Pro Plus before a match. Eight, eight, yeah. What's a Pro Plus? Just a caffeine, type caffeine, just pure. That's like, well, probably not pure, but like. 50 milligrams of caffeine, same as a Red Bull. In so I was having eight Red Bulls in one go. And I literally, lad, I went, um, <laughs> I'll try and find, I'll try and find the stats. But that season, I scored the first goal of the game. I can't remember how many times it, I kept, I, I'd score, I'd score within three minutes. <laughs> and I, But, but what I find, what I honestly think, believe now is, I reckon I've, I've, I've built up a caffeine intolerance. So I have like spikes in it where if I have like a cup of tea, I feel horrible off it. Yeah. And I think that my body's like, yeah, like pushed against it, yeah. Because yeah. I used to do that every Saturday or every Saturday and Tuesday. So it can't, you know, it can't, nothing's, nothing's healthy in abundance, everything's a balance. So that's a bit extreme, I thought. Yeah, but I felt like, and then the more I had it, the less effect it had. So I had to have, I ended up having to do um, Become an addict then? <laughs> no, 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 the opposite. So you had oh. to, uh, they're not addictive, but I'd play. And if I'd eat, like it wouldn't, it wouldn't like, after so many weeks of doing it, I just didn't really feel the same effects. Yeah. So then I had to go like a month without it. And then I'd do it again and I'd feel effects. The first time I had it, I was flying around the pitch. Yeah. <laughs> I was running around, everyone was like, bloody hell, she and Andy Owens there, he's absolutely, you know, chasing everyone down, man in the match in the first five minutes. <laughs> so when yeah. you come off it then, to feel worse? No, 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 it's, it's just like, you just don't get the same yeah. effects of it. But I do, I do think that maybe it's had a lasting effect on me, because sometimes when I have a coffee or that, it just doesn't... Uh, or it, it doesn't at other times, it peaks and I get I feel I get a headache off them and feel horrible. So I don't really have them. But that job I was telling you about where I bought a crate of them from Costco and I uh, just I think you went because it was there and you needed a drink, 
rather than waiting till lunch and going, you were just having Red Bull. So you'd end up having six, and you just, yeah, you end up, at the end of the day, you're like scraping it off your teeth. <laughs> <laughs> the main sugar in these, I'd rather. 11.2 grams. Is that per 100 or per can? Amounts per can. Yeah, that's not bad, 11, 11 grams. 11.2 grams, like. That's not on that. Yeah. Everyone's got to wish Tom good luck next week. Driving test. Driving test, yeah. Have you, how many times have you had to go? Four. Four! <laughs> <laughs> four! Yeah. You failed it four times. Yeah, this four. is the fifth. Yeah. Wow. I can't deny I've done this thing. You can obviously not. I've done this thing every minute. Ah, right. It's not like I've been driving a straight line, you just can't change. No, it's through. not like I've, like an old granny or anything. I've just, I've just done this thing every minute. <laughs> I haven't hit someone. Don't it? <laughs> I haven't hit anyone just yeah, that's yet. What, so. that's, what, that's what they do the driving test for, so they, to make sure you don't hit people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, when you do your uh, HGV, What's that? Uh, your heavy goods vehicle oh, license, yeah. um, to drive like a skip or a oh, grab yeah. wagon or uh, everything's like everything she made as me because you're high up. A bike can be next to you and you can't see them. So everything you've got to do, you've got to check your mirrors like that, and then you've even got to check your shoulder before you pull off. Yeah. Every time you cheat, every time you do something, Just you've got to check. check that, check that, and check that. And then they even make, they even make windows in the bottom of the door. Yeah. So it's called like cyclist that. windows. So if anyone pulls up next to you and you go to turn left, because imagine you did that, like a cyclist went off, and you just turn left, didn't have a clue he was there, just kill him. There was one in, sadly there was one in Liverpool not long ago and it was an old woman um, and she'd like started to cross or something and the heavy goods had gone was and she'd like... Was that Village? No, 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 this was uh, St. Helens way oh. and uh, the wagon had like run the woman over, got her caught up in the wheel and like just literally gone, you know what I mean, for like... Obviously, he didn't even know because these these vans weigh so much. You wouldn't even know if you hit someone. It wouldn't like, you know what I mean? It wouldn't. It wouldn't be like on your bike or whatever. You make a big. Um, stop swearing. Can't swear on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a big dint. Yeah. So yeah, it's um. But you you sounds like you're a a, a bit away from doing your HCV license. Then if yeah. you can't if you can't <laughs> check your mirrors in a car. What else was I going to say then as well? Um, nah, I'll just be in a minute. That's what I was going to say. So, I've looked at, I've seen on eBay they do scales, you know, for this tipper. Yeah. To make sure that we're not overloading it. So you come in here now and you'd have like a screen here with a the, with the weight, weight system oh, on. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now, it weighs, it, it weighs obviously something. So by fitting a weighing system, you actually you're able to carry less weight <laughs> but i'm sure it's only minimal but one thing is like one of these now worked out the house brick weighs three kilograms this van takes one and a half ton so we can get 500 brick on it but even then we're just guessing aren't we so you always want to be like near your max but you obviously don't want to be over i'm wondering whether they do us like well maybe i should just buy them but I i'd get it for this one but for the other one, I'm going to wait what for... What happens if you go over? Oh, you get fined. Well, obviously, it's not safe, is it, to drive with? Yeah. So, if you're... The van's, like, um, weighted to three and a half tonne, so 3,500 kilograms, that's everything. So that's the van, what you're carrying, and me and you. So we went on a... I can get away scales for the yard, actually. Yeah. It might be worth doing that, I don't know. Um, but... Uh, I, uh, the other van we're gonna like uh, get new uh, body in that for, so it's gonna be worth for this van really. So me and Tom are just on the yard about to. We've got a nice little pile of brick here, haven't we? Shout out to the health and safety officer who uh, watches the channel and can see that we are suppressing dust excellently. Um, I mean, not much comes off this, but just to be. You know, I'll just save him an email.
Here we go. I think I thought I saw. Ah, I got that. <laughs> Had a shower this morning. <laughs> yeah, I get it on this bit as it drops. Can you get the bricks on the tipper? So that's just giving me an idea that what we're going to do is, because the electric and water is in this hut, uh, now I've got the 200ml bucket, this one. Nice. Um, I'm going to core drill a hole in the base of that, and then we're going to feed ducting. So we're going to dig a trench here. This bit's going to be the pedestrian walkway, a metre. So once we get the fences and the gates in, it's going to be a metre out, so I'm going to dig a trench down the middle of this, the full length of the yard. And what I'm going to do, I haven't seen that, is I'm going to, every, however many metres, I'll put a branch. Not I'm going to put a branch, I'm going to put an access chamber. And then I'm going to tee off and have um, taps connected to these concrete um, panels that we're putting in. And that way we'll have one there, one here, maybe one, two, so one, we'll have one, two, maybe four sections with a tap and that way you know you're never more than like 10 meters away from obviously a, a hose connection you all right after you you shower there if anyone can think of any other ideas to future proof this yard whilst we're at this stage because the next stage now is that we're getting um concrete slabs delivered and um, i think we're going to start at that bottom bit and just work backwards here to obviously the drop curb and then I just need to save up four and a half grand to do the drop curb this side and that way because they're going to come on a, a high ab and they'll be able to lift them into place but I'm thinking of starting that way and then working here and then once we've got a base there we can start moving the scaffold stuff onto the concrete that's my plan whether that works or not so I've started counting the bricks on the tip and now we've got 285 on this one now. That's 285. 290. They've got like half. 290. So in theory, if a brick weighs three kilograms, we should be able to have 500 on. However, 285, I think if we get 300 on, that'll be a load. Because what we don't want to do is the tipper piston for the tip is about here so we don't want to load it too much that it's struggling to tip 290 so next one will be 300 who will it be plain 300 That's what 300 bricks looks like. Right, net on. The lads are gonna get. How many more chips do you reckon you've got? One there, one in the back. Two more chips of brick, and then we'll do the wood. And I've got Blaine in the hot seat today. It's your turn. There's the, uh, there's the guy with the footy boots in it. You ask him. So have you not got your? Have you not got your boots on today? Have you not got your football boots on? Football? Football boots? No, no football. No? Uh, I think football boots here. Yeah, you had them on last uh, the other day. Football boots. Uh, well, that's for you. <laughs> no, no, I don't need football boots. I'm <laughs> I said you had your boots on the other day, football boots. You want a football boot? No. <laughs> <laughs> I give up. <laughs> oh, I give up. <laughs> I should have said yeah, and he'd have gone, oh, I've got a pair in here. Yeah. <laughs> oh. What are they getting there? Lamb, full lambs. Oh, is that the, this, is this the one you got the dodgy stomach off? Oh, hey. I'm getting another one today, mate. You're getting another one? You can't slander them, they're heavy. After hidden gem lad in Liverpool. What's it called? Babylon Bakery. Yeah. So four star food hygiene. Four star. I think if they seen that delivery, they wouldn't say that. 
Um, we just what loads this number four in it? Yeah. Four float. What time is it? Oh, lad, where's my watch gone? Oh, I've put it on charge this morning, haven't I? Unless it's unless it's come off. I hope it hasn't come off. I hope it hasn't come off in them bricks. I'm gonna ring. I'm gonna ring Rachel now and check. I can't remember if I put it on or not, you know. Ah, oh, few minutes if I've. Wouldn't have put that on today, mate. I've had it on every day, it's when someone rings, you can just go, yeah. Oh, I'm thinking now whether I've had that on or not. Panicking there. Find the iPhone. Is that like. When you're definitely. In touch, yeah. Definitely there, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, because it's fully charged, but on charge and not. Woo! <laughs> you can eat beef raw. You can eat beef raw? Yeah. Can you? Yeah, you can eat beef raw. I mean, you can eat anything raw, but... It's called tartare. You can eat beef mince raw, it's, and it's a big dish in France. And you just eat beef, beef mince raw with, like, egg yolk or something. So, you can't... You can't so, it's not that it's raw. It's that it might be off. Because I, I just look at that road and like that road, everything on it is like cheap as chips, isn't it? It is like... Like everything's a pound shop and whatever, everything's yeah. like, everyone's trying to make fine margins on stuff. So if he's got like lamb that's like a day out of date, he's yeah. not throwing that away. He's just going, yeah, just... He's probably got the pot and he goes, yeah, give them builders that one. Yeah, I probably... And then he's got one for all his mates that's like just come in. I don't mind, it tastes nice. <laughs> you must have a strong stomach, all the other lads are off. <laughs> Dave threw up, Joe threw up, Lewis threw up. And I'm going to get another one. <laughs> <laughs> That's how nice, That's how nice they must, it's a good advert for the fella by the way. That's how nice they must be that three of our lads have been sick off them and yet Blaine's still going to get one today because it's that nice. <laughs> it's annoying this isn't it because if we had, even if I had, a five ton or a seven and a half ton which are the same size truck do you know what i mean it's not like it's taking up any more it doesn't affect anyone else literally it doesn't, doesn't take up more space like doesn't i don't even I, I, is it the same size engine it doesn't give off any more fumes like it's just it's just able to carry more weight but i can't get one of them until i get an operator's license so we're having to do more trips now Rather than just doing like one or two, we've now done four. Frustrating and obviously wasting time and money, isn't it? You've passed your test, haven't you? Yeah. Tom's got his next week. What's stopping you getting a van? <laughs> do for work. What? You can do for work. No, so have you got a van girls. now? more bills for the minute. If you got a van now, you'd get paid more. So you'd get an extra 2,600 a year. Off what? Off me. If, you, van. if you've got a van, you're more valuable, aren't you? And then if you've got a van, you're more likely to buy tools and have tools. And then you'll get another 2,600 a year. It'd probably cost more than that to run a van now. No, it's just at the minute, like, I wanted to be out something that first and then I'll look into it. It'd help you do your house up though, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> or you've got to wait till you're 30 and then you can drive one of these ones. Yeah. How old are you now? 27. 27. Well, when Lou, Lou's 25 this weekend, does he? Yeah. Mad Lou's been, Lou's been with me nearly five years. Mad, that. How long are you? How long have you done now? Just over a year, I think. Is that it? it feels longer, doesn't it? Because you, you come in first, Jack, then yeah. you. Jack was a few months before me. That's Amy Webster puncher. Is that what it is? Yeah. Ah. The clean classics. I always think it's better getting um, staff from like people you know. So like I got Ben, Ben got uh, Scott, Scott got Mick, 
then Jack come in. Jack messaged me on Instagram. Yeah. And then obviously Jack was like, oh, get you in. And then now I got Mick off YouTube. Yeah. And then Mick got Joe Mick brought Joe in. Uh, and Dave. And then now Joe's uncle was looking to come in as well. Yeah. But it's always like I feel like it's always better when someone recommends someone, especially if they're like working with you as well. Because they're not like, gonna they're less likely to recommend someone if they know the yeah. lazy. I've gone for the lunch, I've just come on mine to Northwest Forklifts. Um, well, fork truck, sorry. Uh, it's me mate's brother. So, just gonna pop in now and have a, have a chat. See what he's got available. So I haven't even got, I haven't even got the money in my bank yet, but it's nearly already spent. And one in, this week's this week's going too well. One of the um, I rang up uh, me and Shora to check on a price for to add the forklift if we can get one that's road legal. And um, he's just he's just emailed me back and said uh, I sent him like a red you wanted seen on eBay that I was looking at. And he just emailed me back and said, yeah, um, I've added that. Uh, there was no additional premium at all, so that's on your fleet insurance now. And I was like, I haven't bought it yet. <laughs> But at least it's good that, you know, if we want to add that to the fleet, it, it doesn't cost anything. So to be able to have that option is, you know, I feel a bit, I feel a bit blown away at the minute, um, how quick things are sort of progressing on the yard and how quick the company is sort of hopefully going on to bigger and better things, yeah. Second biggest thing can do. The second biggest forklift. Um, used, used trader, yeah. Like so you've got 430 forklifts. So you're saying, what that? What's that one for? <laughs> ten ton. Ah, right. But this is um, a rough terrain. I just think that. Yeah, I think it's too big. Is it open? <laughs> yeah. Oh, big, big heavy metal door as well. Yeah. So I reckon we'll be all right because we're going to have it for a bit. So you reckon it'd be better with like, uh, not like a uh, skinny or another, what do you call the tyres? I don't know if I've actually got any with any tyres on, I'll have to have a look, but you can interchange them, can you? Oh, I can't, I can't, uh, I can't record this now. So, he's just saying about these gas ones are good, because they uh, say so you can just swap the gas bottle, bottle and uh, go again, they're probably some of the better ones. And he's got this one with, uh, this will lift two and a half ton, and I've got these tyres on it. Um, 2014, I think he said it was, so. Right, just leaving now, and um, I just bought a forklift. Yeah, so thanks to Northwest Forklift Limited. I can't believe how many forklifts they've got in there. It's absolutely ridiculous. Let me have another, have another look for them. But yeah, I'm going to drop it off next week, so couldn't have been any easier. Look at the size of these ones. What, a, what an operation. 
So cheers Louis. I don't think Louis watches the YouTube. I'm gonna have to uh, message him myself and uh, say thanks for introducing me to his brother because he's just sorted us a good little forklift out there 2014. Didn't think I'd be buying one that new. I was looking, no joke, the one I've just um the one I've just got the price for on. Um the car was 1987 or something. <laughs> Um, I am buzzing there, you know. AJ Owens Builders has got a forklift. Wow. Wow. It's weird, like, one of my mates, uh, Josh. Shout out to Josh, who watches uh, watches all the episodes. He used to um, he used to live with me, and him and his dad um, actually gave me one of the first jobs in building. Obviously taught me like taught me loads of like on site stuff and then obviously I'd gone and done all my courses and that. But hey Josh, can you believe I've got a digger, a concrete crusher, and now a forklift? Hopefully next one will be a truck when the operator's license comes operator's license comes through. So yeah, it's just weird when you take a little step back and think, what's going on? <laughs> But yeah, um, right, that's over. Uh, back to work to go and crack the whip with the lads. And I won't have to crack as many whips on the yard now that we've bought a forklift because we can carry two and a half ton without moving a muscle. Right. Someone, someone pinched me because I feel like. The last week, I had such a bad week, felt like just, you know, just stopping everything, giving up the yard, you know, stopping the YouTube, couldn't bother doing it. And then this week, you just keep chipping away and, you know, good things will happen. Someone's just rang up, seeing all the bricks we've tipped at the yard and wants to buy them. So that's the forklift paid for. And we're, 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 instead of paying to get rid of the bricks, which we normally do, we used to do, we're now obviously getting paid to take them to the yard and then we're going to sell them and we're going to crush any halves, any other bits and recycle that, that hardcore. I feel like, I feel like Richard Branson at the minute. You know, I feel like everything's here. Everything's fell into place and started working for once. You have like good days and bad, but I always remember the famous uh, saying from Denzel Washington saying like, when you're at your highest is when the devil comes for you. So I've got my eyes open now waiting for someone to crash into me or something bad's going to happen because it can't, it can't keep getting good news like this one after another. But yeah. I want to swear, but I can't. <laughs> right, I need to stop filming me in the van. However, the guy who wants to buy the bricks, it turns out he's a bricklayer and he's doing a garden wall. So I was talking about obviously delivery and whatever else. And he was like, yeah, it's only, it's on the same road. And I was like, oh, right. So one of the neighbors, is getting a wall done, a new wall built, and they're getting their bricklayer is buying bricks from yours truly, and probably they've objected to my planning. <laughs> what, have you had to wet it in the yard? You're on YouTube, don't swear. <laughs> um, yeah, someone's got to wet it as um, as we tip it, just in case any dust. I mean, we haven't really had any dust when we've done it, but... And then it, I always think it's better... I don't like anyone going somewhere on their own, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, say something happens, like he falls over or does something, or faints or something like that. <laughs> I wasn't going to bring you or Ben. I wasn't going to bring you or Ben in the van because I thought I 
I'll take one of the cheaper lads, but... Uh, <laughs> the, uh... you, you shall do more. You shall do more on the job than them. And they can do it's this. Stuck on the left side, because it must down now, like. But we've had him... Um, everyone, literally everyone's had a go in the van now, other than Ben. <laughs> oh, it's hot today, isn't it? London, but I think you've seen a dip in it. Yeah, frog. Yeah. Mm. Um, it works though, doesn't it? Yeah. Suction's it like. Lighten the frog up. Why do you want to build the extension on that out of block? This one will. So, what, it, what happens is when you do lawful developments, when you do permitted developments, the extension, whatever you do, the dormer, the extension has to be. Same material, similar similar materials to the existing house. Right. Not not when it was built, the existing house when you owned it. So right now this is rendered. So he's had it before where he's built an extension, rendered it, and because they don't want us to do HMOs in this area, they like they inspect everything. So he's had one one extension. We had to take the roof off it because it was ten centimeters too tall. However, he could have raised the ground up 30 centimetres and it would have been fine, but that's what I mean, they were, they were being difficult with him at the time and he was just like, sound, you know what I mean, like, I'll just change the roof. He probably, probably thought he wasn't going to do it and he just was like, yeah, sound, just change the roof to pitched and got that extra 10 centimetres. So we're going to have to render that. So there's no point doing it in brickwork and then rendering it because it's going to be 10 times quicker with yeah and there's a I'm, there's a I'd have to look on the plan for that but the back corner of the house has like dropped subsided so we might have to I think we're going to drop the outrigger as well yeah evolve walls or just like the L shape just the L shape so again we might end up doing that in block and and then it'll be easy putting the steels in then but how long it'll take to do that little L I'm only talking like um first story as well how easy it'd be to do that L in block work right, rather than trying to put all the things up putting the things so it might be it's probably gonna work out better if we've got that option, it's subsided, we can either underpin it. So off that window to the end of that outrigger, is that, that over three metres? It's just shy of three metres, so... It's all right to the end of the yeah. square, Well, not quite. I think it's just set back, I'll need to measure it. Oh. So we might need to get you on your forklift, um Pretty dirty, it's like a... It's four bags, the controls, and like the... So he's just told me, obviously, he, he sells them every day uh, all over the country. He's just told me, he's like, if I'm using it on my yard, I don't need a license or I don't need anything. However, as soon as someone else, as soon as I employ someone to thing it, that's when everything... Like where are you? Do you have to have, put them on the course? Like yeah. So, I'll have to do that with probably only me, you and Ben. Although Ben said he's already got his. Whether it's still in date. It can't be because he's been he's been doing it for seven years, so he doesn't do over fourth for seven years with me. Yeah. But just it's more like where you pick the power up, like you can reach like you don't like tilt something too high too far and you can tip it flip it like you lift it up. I don't know how high it lifts. Place, really? Yeah, like no, but there's different there's different masts, isn't there? I don't well, know how get tall on, but them normally stand right like, like, well, at least to that top window so on that. Is it? So like still like racking in the way around yeah. like, I was looking at racking for the for the yard, you know like, outside ones for like the wood and and even like the planks of scaffold and that. And he fell at rents as well got a scaffold for him. We went to have a little corner of the garden, you put like a scaffold and slide to the and yeah. walk in. Mm -hmm. the wagons to come in and take what they want and do jobs. Oh mate, I, I literally, it sounds weird, like, but I only, obviously I only got the email yesterday and thought, oh, next thing they probably need to forklift to get these 
concrete things off. Did they pay for the damage for the van? Didn't they go and get yeah. fixed? No, so what happened was he crashed into the van and the insurance said, well, for us to get a new a new side panel of the van, yeah. the racking, the back panels, the lights, the everything from Mercedes yeah. was like because that, that's the only way they the only way they repair them. Yeah. Do it all properly. So they said yeah, the van's a write off, it's only worth five grand the van. So so I said, alright, well, like to me. I can repair that and I can live with the damage for like whatever and they were like alright so I said can I buy it back off you and they were like yeah you can buy it back off us for like a grand the payments for the damage that like yeah right so like obviously my van's damaged and I'm having to fix it and whatever else but like I'm, I'm basically taking the I think it's four and a half grand they're gonna pay me four and a half grand for basically the damage to repair it and for like the time of doing it and whatever else like yeah. so, so for them to do it I think it was 11 and a half grand it was is what the Mercedes come back with the price for all, them, all yeah. the parts but obviously for I'm me to do like it to I've, I've took the racking off the side I'm not really bothered about that we hardly used it is that just all bent yeah it was just gone I just scrapped that straight away lad my eyes you got his car that's off for a bit just for a minute <laughs> A mirror? Yeah, it's off the mirror, off the car, but we're about five hundred quid every oh. time we buy the mirror and just get it sprayed and fitted. It's gonna cost us more than the cars <laughs> there. Just to rent the car off and he bought it back off and just got it with a scan and put a mirror on. Yeah, that's it, yeah. It's funny that. It's off for a mirror. Do you know what? It's just one of them things though, like you just I can't be bothered with it being on the insurance, like yeah. like that the Asda van, as the done my van, I've seen that my left side, the Asda ripped up like the magnet on the side that stuck out. Yeah. I had a parking side next door, we're getting out of delivery, he bumped me into cut in too tight and the back of his van just ripped all the boat for me like never just took it all off. I just bought something like this going back home to the insurance for a light and mm. goes up. Did you get um the fridge has gone by the way? Yeah, and the you got a video of it? <laughs> <laughs> so what some guy it's come with it as the trolley? And his wife. <laughs> <laughs> Huh? Lad, hey, I'm not even joking. There's yeah, a yeah, there's yeah, a couple that go around yeah. the Romanians, the and ones. it might be the same guy. And he's got him and his wife brand in the new, front seat. Brand new and everything. Had, uh, we, we had, had van in the we had a big tank of metal, big solid thing of metal, yeah. and um, like the lads had the labels couldn't even lift it. So, like me and Ben and whatever, like got it out, and he drove past and he was like, "Can we have that?" And we were like. Feel your boots go on. And him and his missus jumped out, and his missus was like the strongest person ever. His missus just went, like just threw it on the back of the air sprinter. <laughs> and we were all like that, going, Oh yeah, my god. They, they must live in that fag, they pushed it away on it as the sun. Yeah. A small one, it's counting <laughs> on it. Well, it's good that, um, that's why we put it out, because it's good that I've, one, I've not got to pay to get rid of it, and two, they're going to actually be using it. Just mm. don't get the gas bottle set. Set, settle down before they plug it in. Yeah. He's behind close the kitchen. Yeah, coming back to me, blaming us. What number tips this now? It's been a few, hasn't it? How many bricks do you reckon in here? Just checking that bolt still in and intact, and then I just need to. I'll grease this now while I'm, while I'm here, remembered, just seeing the grease gun. Well, we've just come to one of the student jobs because they've just finished making loads of things, so this has all got to go. Um, I definitely need to get a cardboard thing, don't I? That's a, not, not joking, the amount of cardboard we get rid of. More yeah. Um, but yeah, we're going to go and put this on the non recycling tipper, unfortunately. And um, then this one is now going to become the wood tipper. And luckily, um, we've just picked the stuff up. We've just picked the stuff up from one of the houses. And behind it is a workshop for a joiner and he had two dogs running around they ran into the house <laughs> so we got chatting to him and um, he's a 
he makes uh, he like upcycles timbers into furniture and I was like mate like we're literally about to fill this tipper with like floor joists floorboards and he's like oh, I'll have them I'll have them and I'll make I'll make furniture out of them so that oh we'll see how we get on today what time is it now Ah, uh, three. Ooh, yeah, we might get some wood on there now, might we? Depend, depends how much they've took or whether they've focused on the plaster. Um, yeah, we'll drop some off to him and saves us taking it all the way to St. Helens. We're going to want to take it a few hundred yards down the road and then he can make nice furniture out of it. So we literally are eco builders, aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't I I know, it was a joke. It was a joke a few weeks ago. And the more, the, the, more uh, the more I think about it, I don't know if there's anyone else doing what we're doing. Like that Viola, have you seen all those centres they have recycling? I don't know whether there's another builder doing as much recycling as us. All the wood's getting recycled. The only thing, yeah. cardboard. Can't call myself an eco builder till I've got a, a cardboard baler. Yeah. What else? We crush the bricks. I don't know another builder in Liverpool who's got a brick crusher. They used to all get grab wagons and stuff like that, don't they now? Yeah. Skips and grab wagons and like, the people who do it in the vans and that. There you go. Might change the yard to Eco Builders. <laughs> Bowden Eco Builders. Oh, that was a fella over the road who'll object to that, won't he? Yeah. <laughs> you, can't, you can't be putting signs up for killing wildlife to a company called Eco Builders, could you? So this one's going on the non-recycling. Where's all that come from? The blue, the green stuff. Oh, was it stuck on the bay? Um, and then the lads have took all the wood off that was on here, made a pile, and then we're going to empty this now. Get the cages back on, and this is going to come the wood tipper. Um, I've got a guy. <laughs> Got a guy around the corner who wants all the joists. So she's just taking it to Biffa. But we need to um whether he wants the floorboards, I don't know. Probably just the joists. So I don't know if you can see on here, but obviously these joists are ready to come out Monday. However, what's happened here? I mean, I'm able to walk on it now because we've just propped the um, uh, where the acro is there. But you can see when we took the plaster off, it wasn't as bad as this. What I think's happened is obviously when we've dropped the mix, dropped the archway of this. Which can you remember which way it fell? Did it fall this way? It fell in the middle. So what's caused that then? Yeah, but. But what I mean is that it wasn't like that when we... Someone must have felt that go, though. Yeah. Um, so that bit's obviously dropped. And the worry is that... Um, obviously, we don't want that bit to go, so we've just put an acro underneath to stop it going. He's just saying it's all rotten. Yeah, you can see it falling off. Uh, I'll go down there and do a video. But, yeah... Um, so I was going to, uh, I'm toying with the idea, I'll either take these to the yard and use them as fencing if someone objects to me concrete wall or we'll keep them on the yard and potentially sell them but I just haven't got covers or anything at the minute, I haven't got proper storage for them so um, so next thing on here will be all these floor joists out um, we're going to obviously give these floor joists so the joiner around the corner, corner who's going to make furniture with it. And then that leaves us to take another tipper of this wall's coming out, that wall's coming out. And I think what I've decided is that I'm going to drop, because that corner's sunk, we're going to drop this wall and that wall of the outrigger. So the, we're going to lose the outrigger completely. So we'll have to scaff that, take the roof tiles off, drop everything and then we'll dig the footings in one go. So we'll dig from there out and come in, and then we'll block that and render it. That way it's all completely new. Nothing's going to sink because the building inspector's going to come out and do the footings uh, to 
hard ground. Um, so mm, hopefully, I mean, with that sinking like that, maybe I can't remember this road. We didn't pile. We didn't pile the other one on this road. So hopefully this one doesn't need piling. It just needs obviously a proper foundation in. But again, we'll get to that once we've took all the weight off this um, wall. So a bit, bit, bit bigger of a job this than normal, but just a normal, a normal day for us having the. So, right, lads, to so just go, right, change your plan. We're going to drop this and we'll brick it up. So we're going to now, the plan is we're going to get this bit, that whole outrig is going to go, and we're going to brick it up, put the steels in, and then we're going to hand over to, we might concrete the whole ground floor for them, we'll see, but then we're going to hand this over to another builder and we'll go on to the next one. But, yeah, these are the sort of bits that, you know, I'd kind of say, if you're looking to start out in building, this is like a good a good way to start. However, you do need... You, I'd, I'd follow someone else who's doing it because stuff like this would happen and anyone else would absolutely crap themselves and be thinking, oh, my God, what are we going to do? Whereas I know that nearly every single um, breast beam on these houses is rotten and sinking. I mean, you've only got to look outside some of the roads and you'll see... Uh, that one has subsided. Um, that one <laughs> has subsided. Like, literally, probably 90% of them will have subsided at that exact point. So, oh, you can't really see them from this bit, but um, where it was then, you can see... Oh, you can see that one, the bit, um, the sills sunk. Uh, which other one? That one. The single sills sunk as well. So... It's obviously common here. Uh, I'm looking for a really bad one. It's going to be obvious on the thing, but yeah, take my word for it. That they, all, they always happen. It's just knowing obviously what you can and can't get away with. So yeah, we'll um, back on Monday. Wood tipper. Need to fill that skip with all the plaster. And then we've also got a little look at. Oh, let me show you this bit while I'm in here. So. You can see obviously where it's snapped and then underneath where it's got wet and it's just rotted. So that's what's caused it to go because the actual bit that's sat on the... It's like an old school pad stone, that. It's like a really solid stone. See the same on that side? Um, that's obviously got wet and rotted. Um, and you can now see, obviously, the floor levels. So that's obviously the floor level and we're going to concrete this one. So. This is the existing floor, so we need to be... We have 150 mil of hardcore, and we either have 150 mil of jab light insulation, or we have 100 mil of Kingspan insulation. So with this being like this, we might even double insulate this, so we might get 200 mil of jab light, because it's obviously... Or we bring the concrete crusher in, and we will you know recycle as much as we can now from the... Um, all the render off the back, all the outrigger that's going to get dropped. So we're going to end up with a lot of bricks off this house. With it being rebuilt, it's easy going to rebuild it in blocks. So tell you what, long video, I'm going to stop talking and I'm going to let the lads go home. So hope you've enjoyed Friday and this week. I feel like this week's been a good one, even though um, a messy one. But a good one for me, I'm buzzing. Um, and... Next week, hopefully, I'll get me uh, my forklift delivered. So, I hope everyone has as good a week as I've had.